Hello. 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 Good morning, everyone. Are you free, Hello. Joe? I am. It turns out I'm free. I've I've celebrated by taking my eldest son to school. <laughs> That's what I've done she's so a, far. Oh, you know I know she's, she's, now, she's now free to pass it on to as many people as she can, apparently. So we're okay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I haven't actually tested today to see if I'm positive or not, but I'm firmly info informed that it doesn't matter. On day 11, which is what it is, doesn't matter how you feel, <laughs> how infectious you are, you're required to go back into society. So I am back. Yes, thank you. It's been a delight. It has. And David, are you now fully recovered from having to work with the absence of your colleague for 10 days? <laughs> having to work? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you should know that having to work is not a problem that I have ever uh, had to face uh, up to the reality in reality. And uh, uh, the, the thought of having both of my colleagues back is daunting because uh, it means I won't get away in edgeways again, where at least talking to myself, I do. And so, all in all, uh, yes, we're all we're all geared and and ready ready to go full pelt again at doing whatever we were doing before we were bereft of <laughs> colleagues. Never bereft. They just but thought I was I having another sabbatical. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I, I, I did. I did think it was a it was a COVID sabbatical, and uh, and that would have been uh, okay. It would have been okay. But um, I am thinking that uh, getting a sudden pain in my knee, which is so severe, I might have to take a month off. I would. To get, ready for, the cricket league, to get ready for the cricket season. So it's, it's you know... It's prepared. Well, you need some rehab, definitely. Preferably in a warm place, I'd have thought. Yeah, well, that will come in September. That will come in September. But, but don't you need but a pre... The more, the, the more... No, actually, the more I walk around on my legs, the better it actually is. That's part of the thing. It's the sitting or the standing in one place, even worse. If I stand behind the altar for a long time, that bend in my knee, it, it locks. And then I go to move. I'm in severe difficulty Ooh. of dropping the chalice or something. That's not good. Not good. Not we're good. back to where we were seven years ago. No, no, no. no that's a different thing because that was crutches. Yeah, that was crutches. That was crutches yeah. behind the altar. That was quite fun. <laughs> That was that was that was a, a, a that was an amusing time, particularly right. seeing you like a a, a midwife. I'd call the midwife dashing down with your hands to catch whatever may fall. Or I was more worried about you falling over, but I wasn't quite sure. I I did sort of stand behind him, ready to catch. We've talked about this before. I'm not sure how I, I was expecting to you're catch. Being <laughs> you're being flattened. <laughs> 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 Then, then the problem would have come out they get the both of us up. That would have been the real problem. <laughs> a, a pulley on the on the roots cross or something <laughs> would have been needed. So, so embarrassing if my obituary in the Church Times <laughs> squashed <laughs> by the team wreck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Killed in the line of fire. <laughs> taken. Every taken. Every time. Time. might almost take that as an insult, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, on. yeah, that, that would have been true, well and truly slain in the spirit, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thankfully that didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. No, we're, we're okay. So no, no, we 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 are, we are going. We're continuing on as as indeed you are, Chris, and uh, as indeed the uh, Church of England will continue to uh, to rumble on for the foreseeable future, uh, at least. And our away day the other day didn't come up with a solution as to how we save the Church of England. The Archbishop will be pleased to know. Although um, one of our colleagues had some brilliant statistics that suggested by 2040, no one will go to church anyway. But I don't retire till 2044, so I'm not quite sure what I do for the last four years. If well, no one's going to church. Well, you'll at least be one person going to church. Well, true. But I need two for a Eucharist. <laughs> Want me and another? Perhaps well, I have had a, I have a, I have had a letter from a gentleman who wants to meet with us. He's considering moving to Broadwinter, having overcome many difficulties in his in his life. So I've got to reply to that email, and I'll obviously link you into it. So as you're aware, with, mm -hmm. uh, 
I mean, could, he could be the other one. Oh, true. There'd be two people <laughs> in 2044. Yeah, Only looking, two, well, I don't know. Will you two be... You'll be retired by then, won't you, 2044? Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> I'll probably still know, be I've got my, I might have got my maths wrong. No, 2044 is when I retire. Mm. Yeah, I think I retire in 2033, I think. Mm. There we go. Well, the earliest I can go is 2024. Oh, counting oh. down those years. That's only two years away, David. I know, two and a bit years. Yeah. Potential, potential. I did have a well. You've heard of my good friend uh, William uh, Price, uh, who sends me all these magazines, and I still send him the uh, the one the, the your, your group sends me. Chris, he he loves reading it, and has been to your churches uh, visiting in many many occasions, and he stopped in Dorset. But uh, I went to see him one day before he tried, about eighteen months before he tried. He put his computer on, and he t the first thing that came on the screen was how many days he got left to retirement, and every day changed. <laughs> Like a countdown. I thought, I, yeah, I thought that was very, very sad. I really did. Yeah. My wife is going out, dear viewer. Hello. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye. There we are. She's going out. So there we are. That would no, be so a really yes. big number as well, wouldn't it? If it was to yeah. twenty forty four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try it and find. Try it and find out. Take out, the holidays, take out holidays and leave and and sabbaticals. <laughs> That's the only day you got to work. Yeah. You know? It's, there's more to go than I've done. Yeah, I thought it was actually very sad. You're lucky, Joe. I'm so young. <laughs> so young. The thing is, if you're the only one left in the Church of England, you'll be Archbishop, Bishop, Dean, Rural Dean, Vicar of Everywhere, you know. If there's I no one left, to, it'll be fine. I did say to Bishop Graham once that the right the, the, the right the planning of the diocese was going and and because even in those early days of me being here they were talking about closing you know cutting off clergy whatever I said to him if I hang around in Beminster for the duration I could be the vicar of West Dorset. Well, there's still every possibility. Yeah, could happen. Could happen. Although I think Jane J Jane would probably head for that. She must be one of the uh, the younger members. Well, she's already expanding her empire, isn't she? I think we need to stop. <laughs> I'm not getting involved with the job. I think time to time to have a pause, people. reading from Luke chapter 5. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and he taught the crowds from the boat. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Wow. 
the question I asked on the away day was what leaps out at you from that passage? What intrigues you or challenges you? Yeah. Well, the bit at that time of reading was the crowd was pressing in to hear the word of God. Mm. Now, that wasn't one of the answers on, uh, on, uh, on our away day, Chris. Well, that's because I've crossed the border into a different benefice. <laughs> Well, that's because the Holy Spirit does different things on different days. It is intriguing, though, isn't it, that the beginning of this is, is already a crowd wanting to hear what Jesus has to say. This is right, you know, chronologi chronologically, at the beginning of near his beginning of his ministry, and already there's a real um, desire for people to hear what he's saying, hear the word of God. I wonder what he tells them. That's the bit I want to know. What, what's he talking to them about? What's he saying? He probably went on to say, no, my dear friends on the shore, you've seen these idiots in the boat who've got no faith or trust whatsoever. Do you really want to be like them? Just believe in me, follow me and trust me and all will be well. Look what I've done to prove it to them. Oh, well, yeah, but maybe. Do you, need, do you need signs or have you got faith? That's what he probably would have said. That's what I'd have said. If I was Jesus, that's what I would have said. Although he's speaking before the miraculous catch of fish. So he'd say, look at, look what I'm about to do. Oh, uh, but yeah, he'd have gone on talking after he had, I think, I don't, don't think he'd have stopped talking. The fish would have just kind of come in by then and he'd have just kept on talking, wouldn't he? Because the idiots on the boat with him would have just kept on going. So what you're saying is the preachers just carry on talking about Jesus while everybody around them does all the work. <laughs> That's one way of thinking about it. Chris, well, you're That's right, I ascribe to it, but... Yeah, your, your your understanding of this reading is fascinating in the least. <clears throat> <laughs> we were we were talking before we started recording about or no, it was at the beginning of the recording about the decline of the Church of England. And yeah. um and I guess this story needs to inspire us that in fact, you know, fishing for people is is part of our ministry. And the idea is that we're sharing the word of God, we're sharing the good news of Jesus and people want to come and follow him and therefore there will be new growth. The trouble is I feel sometimes like, uh, Master, we've worked all night long but caught nothing. <laughs> That's how it feels sometimes, that you're kind nothing. of uh, plugging away and it doesn't necessarily... I think, I think the Church of England has kind of got caught, hasn't it? You know, it hasn't got the, uh, the whatever, let's cast the net because I'll catch more fish. We're kind of stood on the bank with a little line trying to reel them in one at a time. Maybe. If we're not careful. But also, I think, I often think that these are fishermen who they probably already put those nets in exactly the same place just a few hours earlier and caught nothing. Mm. So doing the same thing with Jesus and without Jesus yields very different results. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's only... interesting. If only we knew how to make sure we were always doing what Jesus wanted us to do. I oh, know that's an interesting point, Chris. How do we how do we um, work out what it is Jesus is wanting us to do amidst all the other things we get caught up in? Absolutely. And when Jesus says, "Follow," you know, come and well, he doesn't actually say it in this, does he? Say, "Follow me." He says, do not be afraid, is what Jesus says. Very similar to how angels speak. <laughs> do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. You know, sometimes I think it is our fear, isn't it, that stops us, or our fear that we might be doing the wrong thing. And being faithful to Jesus presumably brings a confidence. But yeah, I, I, it, I do wish sometimes it was a little bit more clear. <laughs> What to do? Yeah, one of one of our colleagues the other day was more concerned about the fact that the uh, the people who just left the boats and all the fish and walked away, and it was such a waste. Yeah, I don't think it would have been a waste because there's plenty of people there. Yeah, I think so. I don't. They think would have just, is. you know, divvied it up and got on with it. You know, it was a miracle of feeding. It's it, it, In some ways, it's another feeding miracle, isn't it? Because there's all those fish there, there's all those people on the shore. Are these the fish that were hiding to feed the 5,000? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
And what was the other, in one of the other accounts of that kind of story, it actually tells us how many fish there were, doesn't it? Didn't it say there were 244? Have I got the numbers right? I'm not sure. I'd have to look them up. Mm. Well, it just told us that the nets were bulging, you know, full capacity in the in, in, in Luke's account. There were so many, they were going to sink, yeah. They were going to sink. Yeah, were going to yeah, sink. No. They were going but they didn't. Yeah. It's another abundance miracle, isn't it? Like the water into wine. Yep. You know, it's more than we would possibly need. And I guess that's something, you know, what does this teach us about God? It teaches us that God's abundance is more than we'll ever need or use up. There's always more, and there's always more for us teaches us that we don't need to fear with God with us. Teaches us, I guess, that as Pete, as Chris said, you know, things you do with Jesus and things you do without can produce very different results. About being faithful, I guess. It's always about being faithful. <laughs> always just be faithful, you know? Well, I suppose, don't get no, distracted. I suppose the, remi the reminder is... Daily prayers, daily reading of scriptures, daily our daily devotions. Yeah. And close. actually that's us doing our little bit to try and find out what Jesus wants us to do. Yeah. If we just sit on the little or whatever, a treadmill or whatever, saying, right, if I'm gonna do that, and we fill ourselves doing more and more and more and more and more, because we've got to persuade people that coming to church is a really good thing and loving Jesus is a really good thing actually it tends to not work quite so well. No, I think you're right. Although I don't think that telling people that Jesus is a good thing is a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. I think, I think, I think that's part of our primary role. You know, that's, I think, partly what we're, we're here for, because let's be honest, if we're not leading it by example in that field, no one else has got a chance, have they? It's, uh, but I think it's a, it's a persuasion that coming to church alone is going to uh, bring uh, bring redemption. Uh, it, it's a difficult uh, thing to persuade people. But you're quite right. All the rest, the importance of prayer, of reading scripture, uh, of, of talking to others with like minds and understanding the need of it. And I think that's sometimes where we, I don't want to say slip up, but where, you know, as, as a combined group of community of people, we're not getting it right and it is it is by example and presence isn't it that uh, you get people to see the 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 um the joy of following jesus and what it actually can bring to your life i'm reading um dear england at the moment in preparation for our um spiritual book club in the team uh, on the 14th of february and dear england is a sort of um kind of love letter to uh the world or to the country from the Archbishop of York trying to persuade people that why faith is a good idea and uh, he has this premise about um if you're not careful that people there's two people of faith can fall into two camps either you're so people don't realize you're a Christian at all because it has no impact on your everyday life it's just what you do on a Sunday right. or you're so kind of fierce about it that it's terrifying and off-putting and and there's, it's finding that middle ground between people realising that you are you are a Christian because they can see it in your life, but not being so terrifying about it that everyone's like, I can't possibly want to talk to you about it because I feel condemned or something like that. And that is that middle ground, isn't it, of living a life of faith that is attractive, um, not off-putting or invisible. And that is a really, it's a really interesting challenge. Mm. Yeah, I was talking to the family at the funeral yesterday, a gentleman who was 99 years old, and he started coming to church because the vicar of, well, I'm guess, I'll say 60 years ago, one of the first things he did when he met, because, right, that's, that's the theology out of the way, what do you want to drink? And he just said, well, he was just so relaxed, we went, he then went to church for 50 years or he was still a member of this church until he died last week. You know, and that's probably finding a way of striking the balance that we're not too scary. Um, I was looking at that verse 5. You know, 
just Simon saying, Master, we've worked all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, we will let down the nets again. There's that idea that we're exhausted. We've already let down our nets. There's no fish there today. I've had enough. I can't go on. This is a waste of time. And then you get that word, yet. I've got that trust in you. All right, I'll do it one more go. And then the fish had arrived. And when we're, I suppose that's a good motivation for all of us. If we feel that in everything we do, we're not quite yielding, filling our churches with hundreds of people. And yet the one more time, you know, our sermon this Sunday might be the one. Our worship this Sunday might be the one where Jesus says, just do this one and I'll fill your church. Just do this funeral and I'll fill your church. Just do this wedding, I'll fill your church. Wow. That's rather inspiring. Mm-hmm. You're picking Good. that idea for yourself, aren't you? For my sermon on Sunday, yeah. quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will I attribute it to the it. source yeah. material. <laughs> You didn't copyright. You didn't copyright it, Chris. You lost that idea. Now I know oh, we were talking all about that earlier, weren't we? We were, but see, I do quite I, often I, say I, on Rev Chat we were talking about. So <laughs> you see, I think in the signs and miracles, I uh, uh, kind of um, <laughs> understanding the idea that they obeyed Jesus, or they, as you say, however tired they they gave in to Jesus's nagging and put the nets back down there, and the fish came. I think the miracle would have been, or the sign, whichever way you want to look at it, would have been even more impressive if they hadn't have done and the fish just left in the boat. Well, David, you can have you a word with you. More. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and actually, how often does Jesus do things without using his faithful people? Yes. Oh, Chris, you're, 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 no, you're so fine good. today. <laughs> you're so good, Chris. You're so good. I think uh, I think it's time that um, you were uh, you into greater things like um, Bilston. That would be a good place. You could bring them alive in Bilston. <laughs> and if you don't know where Bilston is, just look it up. <laughs> we will. I've got no well, idea, I'm... David. No, uh, just look it up. It used to be the centre of uh, of steel production on the edge of Wolverhampton. No more. Many years gone. But, David, would they cope with my West Country accent? They're not biased up there. What, like down here? Like with down Lincoln's here. With accent. I'm, I'm just saying they're not biased. With that. They would love you for the person you are. And if you bring them the love of Jesus, you'd be OK. You and on that note... On you could set them on fire with uh, Devon cream or clotted cream or something. Ooh. I'm partial to a little bit of clotted cream, I will admit. Yes, I know. I Even know. if the doctors don't like it. Yeah, Jesus didn't do a miracle with clotted cream or strawberries, though, Chris. It was fish. You have to have some tartar sauce, really, or something. Right, come on. I've been trying to wind this up for about the last three minutes. Why right can't? And then, and then my phone rang. Keep on. talking, David. <laughs> you can follow, you can follow us on all the usual ways you want to look at it. We're here. And it's, been, we are. and it's been and it's been great to uh, to share. Good to see you looking a little bit uh, perkier today, Joe. Take it steady though. Well, make sure you don't make sure you don't have your. What time do you normally have your nap? Is it two thirty? After lunch. After lunch. You know, but I, sleep in the funeral. I won't. Now I have to be after the funeral and between the funeral and evening prayer. I think. <laughs> yeah, well, don't be careful. Don't fall asleep during the uh, during the yeah whatever. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Good. Good. Well, thank you, Steady. Chris, it's great as ever to be inspired by your uh, Devonian thoughts and devotional thoughts. It's, uh, it's, it's great. And um, we'll just keep on plugging away because, you know, it's something we feel we want to do. We want to cast the net out and we want people to understand that actually following Jesus brings such a difference and a joy to our lives. So come and find the joy for yourself. Amen. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.